You're listening to the Conversations with Kids Peace podcast. Advice, information, and inspiration from experts at the leading provider of mental and behavioral health services for children, adults, and those who love them. Now, here's your host. The Conversations with Kids Peace podcast is sponsored by Spyglass Solutions, a nationally recognized management consulting group with comprehensive experience in the challenges of the healthcare field. Learn more at spyglasssolutions.org slash conversations. Hello and welcome to our podcast series, Conversations with Kids Peace. I'm Bob Martin. As a health emergency and an influencing event throughout our society, The COVID-19 pandemic is probably the most significant development of its kind in recent history, but the intense focus we all have on all things COVID should not obscure the fact that there are other health-related issues that demand attention, and one of those is the continuing fight against substance abuse. To discuss Kids Peace's continuing efforts in this area, we're very pleased to welcome Connie Uff to the podcast. She is a licensed professional counselor and is currently serving as the clinical supervisor of substance use and addiction treatment services for Kids Peace and our sister organization, Orchard Behavioral Health. Connie, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Bob. All right. Let's um, let's review some of the aspects of Kids Peace's <laughs> program. We've discussed on the uh, on the podcast in the past, we use something called the matrix model in our addictions treatment program. Can you briefly explain and describe what that is and why it's important when we talk about drug and alcohol counseling? Sure. The matrix model has been around since the 70s. It's an evidence-based program, and we use cognitive behavioral therapy to teach clients the um, aspects or the principles of the matrix. It is a very structured program, and it takes clients through the recovery process. So um, they learn about They increase their addiction awareness, what aspects go into causing addiction, and um, also some relapse prevention skills so that we can guide, excuse me, clients into the recovery process to prevent relapse. That's that's really important. I understand you brought us a, a, a video that may go a little bit deeper in that. So why don't we take a look at that now? Orientation to the matrix model. The matrix model was developed in the 1980s as an evidence-based treatment model for individuals with alcohol and stimulant addiction. This program has also gained federal recognition and support by NIDA, SAMHSA, CSAT, and many addiction treatment providers. It is a structured model utilizing cognitive behavioral therapy with over 20 years of research and development. Participants in our program may expect individual sessions to occur weekly, bi-weekly, or tri-weekly with a trained and experienced therapist. During these sessions, a treatment plan is collaboratively developed. A participant may also engage in one to three structured weekly groups, guiding recovery in key skills, including triggers, cravings, stages of recovery, and relapse prevention. Family supports are encouraged to participate in family groups. The individual and their support network will learn the process of addiction, stages of recovery, and how to best help their person in recovery. There are eight principles to the matrix model. Principle one, strong, respectful therapeutic relationship between therapist and individual. Number two, utilizing the structure of the program and follow through with expectations of the individual. Number three, providing quality content, explaining the nature of substance use. Number four, multiple treatment methods, including cognitive behavioral therapy and motivational interviewing in various formats to meet each individual's needs. Number five, 
rewarding and encouraging positive recovery-based behaviors and extinguishing the negative behaviors. Number six, family participation and education in addiction and recovery. Number seven, motivating individuals to participate in self-help groups and community-based programs in addition to the matrix model program. Principle number eight, checking for substance use by drug testing to maintain personal accountability. Thank you for watching Orientation to the Matrix Model. Very good information there. We should also note, Connie, that while it's offered by KidsPiece, your program is one area of treatment that really has a focus on adult populations, right? Well, Bob, we do serve adults, but we also serve children ages 13 and up. So although our age bracket is 13 to 65, of course we'll consider serving someone that comes in who might be 11 or maybe 70. Um, we'll assess them for the appropriateness to the program. Okay. Um, we met I, In my opening, I mentioned COVID obviously um, is a big issue for everyone in every day. Um, specifically, what's been the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on drug and alcohol programs? So for our program, I think that the pandemic gave us the flexibility of combining a telehealth program with in-person. So um, while most of the world was at home and um, protecting their loved ones, we were still in the office seeing individuals um, because there's a certain part, there's a certain piece of accountability there when you're seeing someone in person. So that was really needed for this population. Um, but of course, individuals really struggle sometimes with transportation. So in that respect as well, it was helpful. Or if they weren't feeling well, then you know we could switch to telehealth. So that, for that, it was a benefit. That's, that's really a fascinating insight. I don't know if enough folks understand that while all the, what we see as compromises and barriers to what we're doing, Sometimes you, when you have these emergencies, sometimes a better way of doing things or, or a, a better option for some people emerges. And hopefully as we look at, when we look back on this, we'll see this as a, as a positive from all of what we dealt with. L let me ask, let me ask a question. That's kind of a, you know, kind of a, a unfair question, sir. Um, do you think we're paying enough attention to the area of substance use and addictions? Specifically, I'm thinking about the continuing issue about uh, opioid abuse. And are we paying enough attention to it because, uh, you know, in the midst of, of focusing on the pandemic? Yeah, this, the pandemic has certainly been front and foremost in, in headlines and, and in everyone's lives. Um, but I think Pennsylvania has made such progress in the last decade. Um, they've they've initiated programs like recovery centers, which um, collaborate with family members of individuals that are struggling with addiction. Um, they've opened them up in strategic locations where they're really needed. Um, they've also educated medical personnel to not prescribe opiates as heavily as they were, maybe try something not habit forming first. And um, I'm sure you've heard of the drug take back programs. Mm -hmm. They've been um, put, rolling those out so that people can get unused prescriptions out of their medicine cabinets where they might be used by children accidentally or by individuals who are struggling. It's one of those things that's so heartbreaking is that kids are, you know, essentially with some of these opioids, they were legal versions of heroin sitting in a, a medicine cabinet. Kids got them, used them, became addicted, and then when they weren't able to get them, were then moved into you know some of the more uh, dangerous areas of of securing the drugs. And these programs that are coming on online now um, seem seem to be really well intentioned, and hopefully they they work on that. How do you see clients doing in the program now, with in the midst of again the world of COVID? I think um, our clients haven't been affected as far as 
um, the individuals that have been in our program because they benefited from that flexibility of telehealth and in person. Um, and of course, we have all the COVID precautions in place in our program if they are in person. Um, we recently started our groups back up. We had suspended those and just saw individuals more frequently throughout the week, whereas they normally would have been in a group. Um, so groups are part of the matrix. And um, I, I'm glad that we were able to get those back up and running. And we want to make sure to give it all the tools at our disposal to help these folks. Um, if someone uh, is watching or listening to us, they have a family member or a friend who they suspect might need the help of a program like the one you have, um, what advice can you give them about getting help for their loved ones? Well, I, I know there's an old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a, a pound of, of cure. cure. That's it. <laughs> So um, prevention is key, of course, and October happens to be national um, prevention of misuse of substances or some fancy name. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have um, DDAP, which is the Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs, recently posted um, parenting tips on their social media. And um, it was uh, published by um, the Addiction Policy Forum, and I think we have a list yes, of Yes, we, we, we have a list. It'll be on the website um, to, uh, to show as well. But uh, I, I think that's really, um, that's, I, I would have to say, as a parent, I think that would be comforting to say it's not just this, I don't know what to do. It's a, it's a dark place I'm going with my kids. I don't know what they're doing. To have some guidance to say, these are things that can help, and this is what you can do. Um, and, and again, one of those things that is coming out with the attention that's being paid to the opi opioid epidemic, the, the issues with substance abuse, is that we're getting some of this good information to empower people like parents. And that's, so we'll have that as well. And if uh, folks want to get in touch with your program? Yeah, I believe we'll have the address we'll have and phone number. Um, we're there Monday through Friday. Um, the program is open 8 to 7 to accommodate those evening groups, but there's someone answering the phone from um, 8 to 5. Okay. Connie, we ask each of our guests to end their time with us with a life hack. This can be a favorite saying, a piece of advice that you always go back to, maybe just a tip on doing something around the house better. So what's your life hack for us today? I really like the saying, nothing changes if nothing changes. So. If we're struggling with anything, try something different, whether it's recovery or just in general. And I always like to encourage everyone to, to get outside, do some exercises. It's so beneficial to your physical well-being, but also your mental well-being. I think that's really coming to, a fore, uh, to the fore with folks in the face of COVID-19, where you kind of had to be alone or you kind of had to be inside. They realize how much they, uh, they miss being out and also miss, also understand what the benefits are when you're able to do that. So that's, I think that's great advice. Connie Uff is a licensed professional counselor. She's currently serving as clinical supervisor of substance abuse and addiction treatment services for Kids Peace and Orchard Behavioral Health. Connie, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciated it. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for joining us as well. We look forward to having you join us again for more conversations with Kids Peace. Our podcasts are produced by Robbie Allred. I'm Bob Martin. Until next time, take care.